Welcome to Y Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlop Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada, and where there is a hidden kitchen, but we won't tell you where it is so you don't steal our milk and cookies. This is lesson 14 of our Canadian Amateur Radio Training Series. This section is on energy and gain. A lot of it is stuff we've already covered. It's consolidated. It's a bit of review. And after your head hurting from lesson 8 and lesson 13, you go for it on this one. 90-95% to keep your average up. So, recap of frequency basics. In AC, alternating current electricity. In radio and sound, they all have frequencies. And the frequency is the number of waves or cycles per second. The basic frequency unit is hertz. So, 1 hertz is 1 cycle per second. Thousands per second is kilohertz. Millions per second is megahertz. The audio human hearing range is uh, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, or 20 kilohertz. So to help you remember that, think 2020 vision, 2020 hearing, 20 to 20,000 hertz. But we don't need that full range for amateur radio. You know, 20 to 20,000 hertz, that would be for listening to great music. In amateur radio, we're not allowed to play music on the frequencies. So 300 to 3,000 hertz is enough for our human voice. Radio, in general, is 100 kilohertz and above, and most of the signals are up in the megahertz range. And the length of one wave is the wavelength. Don't worry, we'll have some diagrams for that. So wavelength versus frequency. So yes, the wave has a physical length and it's based on the speed of the signal. So since hertz is cycles or waves per second, how far does a wave travel in one second? What's its speed? How many waves happen during that second? That's the frequency. So the wavelength is the speed over the frequency. So let's just jump right to an example for radio, electricity, and light. That all operates at the speed of light, 300 million meters per second. If you can't remember if it's 300 million or 300,000, again, it's because sometimes it's expressed in kilometers per second, sometimes it's meters. We stick with meters at 300 million. So if we've got a signal running 30 megahertz or 30 million cycles per second, our wavelength is the speed of light, 300 million meters per second, divided by the 30 million waves per second, and that's 10. So it's a 10 meter wavelength. Some other frequency math. As the frequency goes up, the wavelength goes down. And you'll see the diagram. In the given amount of time, if we're putting through more waves, there's less distance between them. So for the same distance, for the higher frequency, we get a shorter wavelength. Or for a lower frequency, we get a longer wavelength. So 100 hertz is 100 waves per second. So one wave takes 0 0.01 second, or 1 one hundredth of a second. That's the duration of the wave. So it's Harmonics are multiples of the frequency of a base frequency. So 8 kilohertz is a harmonic of 4 kilohertz is a harmonic of 2 kilohertz. 40 megahertz is a harmonic of 20 megahertz. And that applies to wavelengths as well. So 20 meter is a harmonic of 40 meter. Remember, shorter wavelength is higher frequency. Power, we measure it in decibels. So power is always relative. It's not an absolute measurement in radio because it all depends on how it's being received. Someone farther away will get a weaker signal. Somebody with a crappy antenna at the same distance will get a weaker signal. And higher frequency always needs more power. So again, there's formulas, but here's all the math you need for power and decibels in the test. If you're doubling power, you're adding 3 dB. If you're doubling it again, you're adding another 3 dB. And 10 times power is adding 10 dB. 
reading the power level. That's the S meter, the signal meter. So your radio has an S meter to read the power. And like the power, it's in dB, so it's relative. And the S meter is goes 1 to 9, 0 to 9 and above. It's kind of weird, uh, but it's traditional stuff. So each S meter unit is 6 dB. So remember, S for 6. One unit on the S meter is 6 dB. And remember, 3 dB is doubling the gain. So if you're going 3 dB and 3 dB again for 6 dB for each unit, it means for each S meter unit, you're getting four times gain. And then above S9, you're going to read it S9 plus 3 dB. So if somebody's transmitting and you're receiving at S9 plus 3 dB, you want them to drop their power. So here's an example of the math. If we're reading S9 when somebody's transmitting at 150 watts of power, then S9 plus 10 dB will be 10 times the power. And that'll be 1500 watts. But remember, use minimal power. Request a signal reading when you're transmitting. Offer a signal reading for people transmitting to you. And aim to have S9 at the receiver. Now take quiz number 14. The links are in the comments section below. This is pretty simple math for this section. Uh, and you want to get that high score to keep that average up. We're YLab. You can find us at https colon slash slash ylab.ca. If you leave some comments below, maybe we'll get around to reviewing them.